I built a repurpose tool that converts entire podcasts into X threads. This was all done using cursor and I thought I'd share it here just in case you're wondering what you can build using AI. This is honestly one of the coolest projects that I've built so far in cursor AI. The idea came up while I was just on Twitter checking out this post right here, which is pretty simple. It just has a summary of what went on in the entire podcast and the following threads are basically clips of the podcast and a short explanation of what was going on in that specific moment. I immediately thought, okay, I already have an AI video editor. And if you don't know about this AI video editor, feel free to check it out in this video right here. But basically one of its features is grabbing an entire video, fetching for its entire transcription and segmenting it along with timestamp, which is basically the YouTube transcription. If you want to check this out, just go to a video's description, click on show transcript, and you'll see the entire transcript here. If the timestamps aren't showing up, you can just click these three dots, toggle timestamp, and those timestamps will either show or be removed. So now that I know I have all these segments, they are basically groups of phrases that I can send over to the AI and ask it, hey, based on this entire transcription along with its timestamps, please return just the segments of this video that would make a nice X post. So if you want to build something complex using Cursor AI or you just want to build a similar repurpose system, in this video I'll show you all the features and give you a brief summary of how was the process of building this using Cursor AI. So first up, we have the upload video. Let me just upload a Rick and Morty video. And this card is pretty simple. It really has is a play button, a pause button. You can play it at 1x and at 2x speed. The video history card is just a way for you to keep track of everything you already transcribed, just to ensure that you're not wasting with multiple transcriptions. For now, let's skip the manual transcription input. I'll talk about that in just a bit. Let's use the generate segments. When you click that it's basically going to identify all the silences and what it considers silences can be toggled right here so if I place a 70% and apply changes you'll see I get more segments. To check out what's being considered silences you can just zoom in and see that some of these sections are just completely removed and between them are the actual audio at which become these segments. So now these segments are just audio. I have to transform them over to text. That's where the transcribe button comes in and after I press it it starts actually loading and transcribing everything. You can click on that to see this pretty nice dialogue so you can keep track of everything that's being done. Now that it's finished, you can see the transcription down here. You can click on it to hear it. So pretty nice. But doing it like this takes a fairly long amount of time because you're not just sending the entire audio wave over to Whisper API so it can retrieve the entire transcription over. No, you're actually sending segment by segment. And even if you were to send an entire batch, in my case, I'm sending a batch of three, it's still slow. So for this example, it took about four minutes to process a about six minutes video. And I really don't think that's ideal. That's when I had the idea of a manual transcription input card. What this does is pretty interesting. So let me F five, you'll see that we get the video history of the video that we just transcribed. So we don't lose that, that entire transcription. Let me select this video right here. You'll have to actually download the video. And this video is the entire podcast from Lex Friedman. Now comes a very important thing that I should say while you're repurposing videos in X is that try to get permission from the YouTube channel so that you can actually repurpose that content. I use the project to build this exact thread right here from Liam Oatley's recent video. But the first thing I did was ask him, hey, can I repurpose your recent video? And then he gave me permission to do so. So that's the only reason why I posted it. So yeah, really be careful while repurposing other people's content. Now, the second step is basically grabbing the entire transcription from the YouTube transcription that is already created. Go over to the tool, paste that in there, parse transcription, and that's done. You already have all the segments. Now that we have all the segments, click on use this transcription. And finally on generate X posts. After it's done, you'll get all the suggested posts. So here in the beginning, Google CEO just had the most important AI interview of 2025. He revealed mind blowing insights about AGI, the singularity and why AI will be humanity's most profound invention ever, including when we'll actually achieve AGI. So this is already a pretty nice hook. Moving on, we can actually click to generate video clip on these specific posts. And this clip that is generated is based on these two minutes and 14 seconds. So that's the size of that this particular clip. And ideally, this clip is talking exactly about what is mentioned up here. You can even see the transcription for that segment, which is right over here. And while using this myself, I noticed that the AI would cut off at where it shouldn't. So I don't know if that happened right here. Let me 
hear it. Actually, that was cut perfectly. But if I wanted to alter wherever, like which segment that it was cutting at, I could just toggle this and then it would include the next segment. The next one after that, I could just hit apply changes and then generate that video again. To download the video, just hit download video clip and drag it over to X to post this particular clip inside of that post. In case you're curious, this is the rest that was generated. So the clips are around like a one minute to three minutes. For this thread, we got up to eight different posts and this is sufficient for a X thread. Now in cursor, if you go over to show chat history, you can see all the chats that were made to create that specific tool. And since this used a lot of features from the AI video editor, it took fewer prompts for me to get it done. Uh, overall, it took 49 prompts. So you can check that out right over here where it says 4X. So 4X, uh, 2X, then 17X. There is a point here where I probably use it. The maximum amount of prompts that I sent in a unique chat was 17. I believe that above 12 or such, it starts to hallucinate. So avoid going over that. For whoever is curious about how these chats went, let me give you a short preview of kind of debugging through the application. For most of the times when you prompt something inside of cursor, asking for a specific feature, and especially when you give it the right context, it will build the entire application in probably the first three prompts. The rest of the time, you'll probably be dealing with getting it to work exactly like you want it to. So at this point of the project, I already had the full structure and it was just a matter of tweaking around the prompting so that it understood exactly how to create the JSON structure. This is something that happens a lot. When you ask the AI to return a JSON structure, it's usually going to specify that inside of the prompt. And that is totally wrong. But even though it's in the prompt, you should expect the AI to answer in that specific output. So for my example, I'm using open router and I could just type in open router JSON output. They have that specified in the documentation, how to configure the AI to output the exact JSON you want. The same goes for OpenAI. I believe it's OpenAI functions or they might have renamed that. So now it's just structured outputs. And if you're just lazy enough to not want to read through this entire documentation, you can always just copy the page and paste it inside of cursor so that the LM knows exactly how to do what you want. Edge cases is another thing you'll be testing a lot. So for this example of parsing the actual transcription from YouTube, there's a situation where some videos have chapters inside of their timestamps. And when you have that, it kind of breaks the structure of that transcription being sent. So just sending this all over to the AI so it understands exactly how to parse this text was the way I managed to make this card work. The project's repository will be in the description. And I'll improve the readme file down here so that it instructs exactly how you can run this project. This project was built using the stack that I talk about in this video right here. And if this video gains any traction, I'll know that it's a topic that people might want to talk about, which is repurposing and adding more content, especially in this age where focusing on quantity seems to be the way to go. That is it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Till then.